Hey everybody, welcome back. It's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. This is going to be our last topic of Unit 1, and this is 1.6 nucleic acids. We don't have a ton to cover in this video, so I'd imagine it's going to go pretty quick. Uh, that's opposed to, say, 1.4 and 1.5, which we did cover a lot. Um, so 1.6 today is focused on nucleic acids, and more particularly the structure of nucleic acids. And our two main nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, have some key differences, key structural differences that we're going to talk about today. Um, and that's going to be it. That's going to be the main focus. Um, so let's get started. Take a look at uh, this image that I have here, or lots of images that I made down here. Um, this is actually the same image from the last video, um, talking about the fact that DNA is both double-stranded um, and it is anti-parallel, meaning that a 5' prime to 3' prime end runs one direction and 3' prime to 5' prime runs in the opposite direction. A few other things to note um, is that the nitrogenous bases, so A, T, C, or G in the case of DNA, uh, these are able to form covalent bonds across the ladder um, with each other. And A forms a T and C forms a G. Apple goes in the tree, car goes in the garage, right? So one strand is kind of right side up, the other one's upside down. Um, and covalent bonds are formed between a three prime carbon and the phosphate group of the next neighboring nucleotide. All right, so just a little review of uh, the structure of DNA. Um, but here's what we're going to get into in this video, the structural differences between DNA and RNA. And I put them, you know, pretty, you know, succinctly in this uh, table right over here. So if you just remember this table, you should be pretty good. But there's a few more details that I'm, we're going to talk about. Um, so... DNA has deoxyribose sugar as its pentose sugar um, as, each, as part of each of its nucleotides. Um, the four types of nucleotides it has are the four nitrogenous bases that DNA has are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. DNA is made up of two strands, while RNA has ribose sugars or ribose uh, as the pentose sugar that uh, makes up this sugar phosphate backbone. Um, it has adenine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil as its four nitrogenous bases, and it's usually only one strand, um, unless you're talking about tRNA, but we won't get to that today. Um, all right, so take a look at the first structural difference uh, between RNA and DNA. It has to go back down to the nucleotides, and as we know here, every nucleotide of a nucleic acid has a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Um, but there's one key difference in the pentose sugar, between RNA and DNA, and it's actually the reason that they're named deoxyribose and ribonucleic acid. Um, so DNA has what we call a deoxyribose sugar. Um, so deoxy, that prefix, what might that mean? Well, it doesn't have oxygen. It particularly doesn't have one oxygen atom. Um, in our last video, we reviewed how each of the uh, carbons in the pentose sugar has a, has a number to it. So five prime, four prime, three prime, and that's our directionality, right? But another carbon that plays a role in determining whether or not we're dealing with DNA or RNA is actually the two prime carbon. So take a look at this ribose sugar over here. So this is an RNA nucleotide. Um, it has an OH group or what's known as a hydroxyl group uh, coming off the two prime carbon as opposed to the DNA nucleotide, what do you notice here? The, we have five prime, four prime, three prime, two prime, but as opposed to the RNA, take a look, we only have an H. We don't have that extra oxygen atom attached to that two prime carbon. We have a hydronyl group rather than a hydroxyl group, okay? So that is actually why DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid because it doesn't have this extra oxygen on the two prime carbon like RNA does. Okay, so as I put down here, DNA has a deoxyribose sugar, no OH on the two prime carbon. That carbon that's why it's called deoxy. Um, and RNA has a ribose sugar, and it does have that OH on the two prime carbon. All right, so if I just give you one, if I'm like, all right, is this going to be DNA or RNA? And I give you a picture of one nucleotide. Now you should be able to tell which is going to be the DNA and which is going to be the RNA just based on whether or not there's an O on that two prime carbon. All right, let's keep going. Uh, this is actually the last page. Woohoo! Look at us. Um, a few more structural differences. DNA is usually double stranded. RNA is usually single stranded. So DNA has two polynucleotide strands. As we know, they're anti parallel. Okay, DNA and actually ends up being much more stable of a compound because of its 
uh, extra covalent bonds that it has between its nitrogenous bases. Um, so that's why you can find DNA at a crime scene, scene and you, you're not usually going to find RNA because RNA tends to break down more readily um, in environmental conditions because it's only got one strand. Uh, so DNA is two-stranded, and in order to make a copy of DNA, we have to separate the strands um, or enable to for us to transcribe the DNA and make RNA from it, we have to open up the strands first. So that's a topic that we'll get into a lot in our sixth unit, uh, which will hopefully be next semester. Um, let's see. And last key difference here is uh, in the nitrogen spaces of the nucleotides themselves, RNA um, does not have any thymine or T nucleotide. Instead of T nucleotides, it has uracil or U nucleotides. Um, so if we take a look, and as you can see, uracil is still a pyrimidine. Um, there's just a very slight difference between thymine and uracil. It looks like ex one extra carbon over here um, is the only difference between the two. But it is key to note that, whoops, what happened to my picture here? There we go. Uh, it is key to note that RNA has uracil rather than thymine. But uracil still complements adenine. Okay, so if I unzip this DNA strand over here and then I transcribed it and made an RNA molecule with it, um, this RNA molecule, it, instead of T, it has U, but it still complements this strand on the left over here that I drew. Okay, so U pairs up with A and then C pairs up with G, so on and so forth. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. That'll be actually it for unit one on chemistry of life as well. In the next unit, we're going to get into the cell. It's going to be awesome. Bye, everybody.